Hello developers, this is Arun Gupta and Sanjeev Sahu from the Glassfish team at Oracle. Uh, we are showing in this screencast how OSGI enabled Java EE applications can be very easily developed and deployed on Glassfish. This was also conducted as a hands-on lab at Java 1 2010. In this particular screencast, we will show you how a simple OSGI client can talk to an OSGI service, both of them deployed in Glassfish. Then, we will replace the OSGI client with a web application bundle and we will show you how this hybrid application which is a web application and OSGI bundle can easily invoke an OSGI service. Then we will replace the OSGI service with an EJB based endpoint and show you how OSGI client can invoke this EJB service. Thus we will show how the traditional Java EE technologies can easily interoperate with the OSGI bundles and you know that the web application bundle will be able to invoke EJB service anyway. For more information on how OSGI enabled Java EE applications can be created, let's look at this wiki. You can go to wikis.sun.com slash display slash glassfish slash OSGI and here you will find lots of blog pointers, URLs, documents, samples that you can take a look um, and um, find more information about how this technology can be used. So let's go ahead and build this application. For that, let's go to my blog and we will look at this URL over here. On this blog, you will find links to Classfish 3.1 B20 web profile. You will find refer to detailed docs and completed solutions. These bundles have been pre-downloaded uh, for convenience. And so we'll go to the terminal now. In this directory, I have downloaded the three zip files as you can see. This is my Glassfish 3.1 web profile bundle. This is the Glassfish OSGI feature pack. And this is the docs document that I was talking about earlier. So let's get started on that. So now let's unzip all these files. So I'm going to, go to, going to unzip Glassfish web profile first. Okay, once the Glassfish is unzipped, we go to Glassfish v3 directory, Glassfish, modules, auto start directory. And then here we're going to unzip the Glassfish OSGI feature pack. We unzip it here. As you can see, this feature pack consists of uh, six different jars. And these are the different OSGI bundles that has been created by the Glassfish team and also allows you to show extensibility of the admin console as we'll see later in the presentation. So let's go back and in here I'm going to unzip the S313522 um, bundle and you see here if you go into this directory you have all the docs, you have a palm.xml and you have all the solutions. Docs, you will find the detailed docs. Solutions are completed bundles already. So um, let's go to our Glassfish directory now. And in here, let me start the database first. Now that the database is started, I'm going to start my Glassfish domain. Hello, this is Sahu. Okay, while Glassfish is starting in the background, we have switched to NetBeans 6.9.1. We shall create our first parent uh, project, first Maven project, which is a parent project. Let's select new project. Maven, Maven project with existing POM. Hit next. And there is nothing to configure here. We finish. We select s313522 directory where the pom.xml exists will open it as a main project open the project as you can see it has generated a name nice name for us now let's walk through the pom.xml which is in this directory the relevant sections of the pom.xml is what i'm going to touch upon right now its packaging type is pom we have, select, we have uh, decided to use the final name is used to con uh, generate the jar file name 
and we don't want to include the version num name th number there so final name is just the artifact id will the important portion of this formula xml is the configuration of various plugins used to generate the artifact first uh, maven bundle plugin it comes from org apache felix group the version used here is 2.1.0 extension is selected to be true because we want to generate uh, different uh, extensions for the final artifact supported project types we, project types is needed because this plugin by default does not uh, get activated for all kinds of artifacts so we are going to say that for ejb war bundle and jar kind of artifacts this plugin is going to be active then these are the instructions for this plugin uh, OSGI.properties file, we mention all our plugin configuration, the various metadata for this OSGI bundles in this properties file. And the importance of this hyphen is that this file is optional in a project. The export package is configured such that any package having impl in its name is not going to be ex exported from a bundle. So we'll actually, at the end of this exercise, you'll see that uh, by following simple conventions, you have to, you can avoid a lot of configuration. Next, we're going to use this plugin to generate the manifest, OSJ manifest for our classes, from our classes. So this manifest goal will be running in the process classes phase. Then we have the install goal will be running in the install phase as part of that your OSJ bundle is going to be updated in will be go installed in the OSJ bundle repository which is called OBR otherwise then we are uh, the next plugin that is used is maven war plugin um, and we are going to say that the manifest MF file please use the one that is generated by the bundle plugin so that is the that is configured like this and then as you know uh, each OSJ bundle has something called a bundle class path so we are going to use webinf has slash classes as the bundle class path for our bundle generated bundle next is maven jar plugin again we are going to say that the manifested mf that is created by the bundle plugin should be used in the jar file as the final manifest file that is configured like this here then the maven we are also going to configure the Maven EJB plugin for our EJB project and again the same configuration same configuration has to be done here that the manifest MF that is generated by the bundle plugin has to be used in the final jar file and of course since we are going to use uh, newer Java language features we need to set the compiler source and target versions as 1.5 and then we have enabled this plugin for all the projects as you can see these are the common dependencies which are specified in this parent form they are not enabled by default but they are in the dependency management section this concludes our first parent project setup